Deshaun Watson is out for the season with a shoulder injury. And I think this is the lowest I have ever been as a Browns fan. I didn't think it could get worse after the Nick Chubb injury. But unfortunately, we have found a way to top it with Watson going down, out for the rest of the season. I'm going to give my opinions on the whole thing and whatnot. We're going to run through some of the facts and the quotes. And we'll talk about who could possibly replace Deshaun Watson because there is a season to be played still. It might not feel like it right now, but there is a game on Sunday. And that is going to happen with or without Watson. So this sucks. I mean, this is the best roster ever assembled, in my opinion. And I understand I get, didn't get to see the Cardiac Kids days and whatnot, but this is truly the most talented roster ever put together in Northeast Ohio. You've got Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, Joel Petonio, all in the prime of their careers. And unfortunately, it feels like it's going to go down the drain. It, it, it is going to feel like a lost season because honestly, it is a lost season. Sure, we can try and, you know, lift our morale, talking ourselves into P.J. Walker or DTR. But let's be real. This was a Super Bowl contending team. This was a playoff winning caliber team, right? This was a team that we saw competed with the best NFC team, even without Deshaun Watson, completed a 15-point comeback in Baltimore against what people were saying were the best AFC team with Deshaun Watson. And I just do not see a way that they're going to go the rest of the season and go on a playoff run without Deshaun Watson. This team is still talented enough and good enough to go to the playoffs, in my opinion, but winning playoff games, which was the goal this year, right? I, I, I don't know how that's going to happen anymore. And I am sorry to be the guy who's the rain cloud right now and what looks to be an awful storm over Cleveland, but this just fucking sucks. I mean, that is the cold, hard truth, right? This is a notification that none of us wanted to see on our phones. None of us want to listen to, but Sean Watson is done for the season. And I don't really know what else to say, right? I mean, think about Watson's career for a moment. There's a lot of emotion right now for everyone in this locker room. I mean, these guys have been putting in tremendous amount of effort. And they have been rewarded with a 6-3 and three record so far. And I feel like that, ref that effort by the other 52 guys is not going to be maximized because they're not going to have good quarterback play the rest of the season. And you can get by for a couple of games with that, and we saw that. But we also saw what happens when you don't have good quarterback play. In the Seahawks game, you come up a little bit short. I mean, think about Deshaun Watson, though, for a moment. Seven full seasons, seven seasons in the NFL. Four of those seasons, he barely played half a, half a season. I mean, his rookie year tears his ACL. 2020, he sits out. Last year, he plays six games. This year, he gets to basically six games. Count it seven if you want to count the Colts game. So unfortunately for Watson, now half of his NFL career, more than half of his NFL career, has been standing on the sideline, not even in the game. So you really got to feel for four right now. He's going to hopefully make a full recovery. But, I mean, throwing shoulder injuries are not things to take lightly. I mean, that is the medical side of this, that we don't know what's on the horizon. But it's never going to be an easy comeback as a quarterback when you're throwing shoulder suffers an injury that requires immediate surgery. Now, I've seen some people say if it happened to another position, they could probably power through the rest of the year because they don't need to throw the ball. But for Watson, that's his livelihood, his right shoulder. So hopefully he's able to make a full recovery, but this just sucks. This just sucks. I mean, we watched elite quarterback play in the second half of the Ravens game. And it's crazy to think about Watson went, 14 for 14 for 139 yards and one touchdown to cap off a 15-point comeback against the number one team in the AFC North, the Baltimore Ravens, at M&T Bank Stadium. And he did it with a high ankle sprain, by the way. And he also did it with a fracture in his throwing shoulder. And I'm not, I promised I wouldn't do this, but Brady Quinn, fuck you. Calling him a trust fund quarterback saying he wouldn't want to go out there and play because he got paid. Guy was out there taking shots that put elephants down just so he could play the second half of a game for his team, and he did it with a fracture in his shoulder and a high ankle sprain. Now, if you're wondering, when did this happen? Well, after the game, they said Watson was going to get an MRI. Well, we all sort of, and rightfully, rightfully so, assumed that was on his ankle, and he did get an MRI on his ankle, but he also said, I have some discomfort in my shoulder. 
and that's when they did the MRI on his shoulder, and that's when it was discovered he has a season-ending shoulder injury. Now, before we get on to the rest of today's show, I just want to show Watson some love right now. Spam four like you have never spammed a player's number before because for all of us hurting right now, he's hurting ten times more, right? Emotionally, physically. So let's show the guy some love. Let's let him know the dog pound has his back and can't wait for him to make a full recovery because I, when he hands it, when Deshaun Watson in 2024 hands it off to Nick Chubb for a 75-yard touchdown, I'm going to cry tears of joy. That is going to happen. Book it right now. And we got to get through the rest of this season. But 2024 can't get here soon enough. I mean, that's what we're all thinking right now because this was a all-in season. But the reality is, as long as you ha- you still have your cornerstone pieces, your stars on your roster, which the Browns do for 2024, and Watson, Cooper, Chubb, Garrett, Denzel Ward, you're still going to be competitive. You are still going to be alive and well. Now, here's what the Browns' official statement was they put out this morning, breaking the news. Deshaun Watson underwent an MRI Monday on two injuries sustained on different plays in the first half of Sunday's 33-31 win over the Baltimore Ravens. Imaging on his left ankle revealed a high ankle sprain. In addition, post-game, Deshaun notified our medical staff of a new discomfort in his right shoulder that he felt after a hit in the first half. An MRI of his right shoulder revealed a displaced fracture to the glenoid. I don't know what that is. Despite performing at a high level and finishing the game after a consultation with Brown's head physician, James Boos, medical doctor, and industry-leading shoulder specialist, Neil Alatashe, it has been determined that this injury will require immediate surgical repair to avoid further structural damage. Deshaun will be placed on season-ending injured reserve, and a full recovery is expected for the start of the 2024 season. Maybe the biggest kicker of them all is Deshaun Watson's best two games this year, the Titans game and the Ravens game. Both came at a huge price, right? A injury in the Titans game to his shoulder that knocked him out for the next month or so. And now the Ravens game when he caps off a perfect second half, an incredible fourth quarter to lead an improbable comeback, comes at the greatest price of them all, and that is he's gone for the year. I mean, I don't know any other fan base that truly feels this much pain year in and year out and different types of pain. I don't understand why God has a vendetta against the Cleveland Browns, but he does because it's not the factory of sadness for no reason. Whether it's horrible play on the field or it's for the first time in decades, the Browns have a legit roster. I mean, 2020 was great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not selling them short. But for the first time in a long time, we really all felt like this was a Browns team that could go the distance. And it's robbed, taken away from us. But the season's going to go on, and I don't know who's going to start at quarterback for the rest of the season. Might be a combination of Walker and DTR. Might be a practice squad quarterback signed elsewhere. Might be a free agent quarterback. Phillip Rivers, he coaches his son's team in Alabama. They've got a playoff game on Friday. You better believe I am pulling for the team Phillip Rivers is playing against on Friday. Maybe that will free up Rivers to come play in Cleveland. I don't know. We're going to talk more about who could replace Deshaun Watson because that is unfortunately the ugly reality on the other side of this coin here in just a moment. But really quickly, a shout out to our sponsor today, Prize Picks. Now, what is Prize Picks? It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. With quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types, PrizePix is the number one daily fantasy sports app. So go to prizepix.com slash CLNS. Use code CLNS. You saw my selections for this upcoming slate of games. You can ride with me. You can fade me. But you're going to get a $100 match on a deposit when you go to prizepix.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS. That is all. All that information is in the comments and the description of today's video. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. So, unfortunately, the pity party, which I'm not going to stop throwing for ourselves, does have to come to a bit of an end here. And now we have to ask the question 
Who's going to play quarterback? Right? Waiting for Andrew Barry's press conference to start. But it already has. Oh, Twitter won't update for me. Well, we'll see if Andrew Barry gives us a... Yep, Andrew Barry. I, it was the play, from what I saw, it was a, a hit from Patrick Queen when Deshaun Watson was scrambling up the middle. He And Watson kind of got like sandwiched by two Ravens linebackers and Queen's helmet went right into Watson's right shoulder. I, in the moment, I didn't feel like, oh man, that's a dirty hit or that's going to you know, injure Deshaun Watson. Unfortunately, that is the price of having a mobile quarterback is you're going to take some extra hits. And when those hits add up, this is, unfortunately, the price you can pay at times. Um, yep, Andrew Barry, will, they will add a third quarterback. They will add a quarterback at some point, may not be right away. So let's talk about the quarterback conversation for a second here. There's no good free agent quarterback. I mean, we can add a quarterback, and, and the Browns should add a quarterback just to have another guy. I mean, just both teams have three quarterbacks between their roster and their practice squad. But... If you believe that there is a free agent quarterback walking through the door to save the day, you are going to be disappointed. We can all kind of snicker and, you know, think, oh, Tom Brady, like he's not officially been added as an NFL owner. He could maybe look at this as an opportunity to pick up an extra Super Bowl ring, only play half a season. And if he's not already cemented as the GOAT in the NFL, maybe this cements him as the GOAT for all sports because he went to the Cleveland Browns and brought them a Super Bowl ring. Although that just feels like ultimate fan fiction that's just not going to materialize. Matt Ryan, if he wants to get out of the CBS broadcast booth, he wasn't good last year, though. That's the issue. All these guys were not good. Joe Flacco, I don't think, would want to ever come play for the Browns. But I have to include him. There's no one else. Like I said, there's, just, there's, there's no good free agent quarterback out there. The best one you could argue would have been Carson Wentz because at least we have seen good-ish play from Wentz at times. But Carson Wentz sucked last year for the Commanders. So I wouldn't have been jazzed up about adding Wentz. But the ultimate question is, well, Petey, those guys are better than what we currently have in Walker and DTR. Yes, if it's June and you're adding a quarterback before the season starts. We're in November. Adding a quarterback halfway through the season, asking him to pick up the playbook and roll with the offense is not an easy transition midway through the year. I don't really know how Josh Dobbs and the Vikings are doing it, but that raises another point. Andrew Barry made a big gamble twice this year, trading Josh Dobbs away so that DTR could back up Watson, which I think if they could undo that right now, they absolutely would. Now, of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. They didn't know they would lose Deshaun Watson twice to injuries this season. But unfortunately, losing um, Deshaun losing Deshaun Watson does not have the Browns in a good spot with not very good backup play in position here. And the other time they regretted not adding a quarterback was right before the trade deadline. And they didn't know Deshaun Watson would go down with another injury. But they didn't really feel all that confident about Walker and DTR. The commanders apparently wanted... Uh, arm and a leg for Jacoby Brissett. And I'm not mad at the Browns for not overpaying that at the time. They didn't know what to expect. But they don't have a good backup quarterback right now. Unless you think DTR with real reps as the first team offense and a little bit more time and patience can develop into a good quarterback, it's worth a shot because out of P.J. Walker, all you're getting is a guy that can somewhat keep you in the game, have to have incredible defense and special teams, and somehow he has magically pulled off two game-winning fourth-quarter drives. But that is just not sustainable. And unfortunately, the Browns aren't in a spot where they have a great solution. They can go with Walker. They can go with DTR. Both are likely going to, unfortunately, disappoint. Which one disappoints more? I don't know. But don't spend the next couple of days splitting hairs over which, which guy to go with here. If I had to pick one, probably DTR. At least go back to DTR. We saw some great things out of him in the preseason. I know that Ravens game was an ultimate disaster, but he was tossed into the fire 90 minutes before the game without a real game plan put around him. Maybe that changes with him being named the starting quarterback. And the Browns know, hey, we're not looking for average QB play for the next couple of games. 
we need a starting quarterback the rest of the season. And if we think DTR over the course of an eight, nine game slate will give us better results than PJ Walker compared to Walker, who might give you a better start out of nowhere, then probably go with the rookie. But what do you guys think? Should the Browns add a quarterback to replace Deshaun Watson or, hey, it's next man up, roll with DTR and Walker? Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section. Looking for more updates from Andrew Barry's press conference. And you just got a feel for this entire organization. I mean, this has been an organization that has never had much success since the start of the Super Bowl era. It's been a never-ending nightmare minus a season or two-ish, just one season since 99, right? Decent start in 2014. But outside of that, they've been the laughing stock of the NFL, and they finally have something. They go all in. They trade for a superstar quarterback into Sean Watson. And two seasons into Deshaun Watson's Browns career, 40% of his contract, which, by the way, we'll kind of end with this note here. Deshaun Watson's keep his, uh, cheapest cap hits last year and this year. Those were the years to maximize Deshaun Watson's cap hit being lowered through restructure and the way that the cap was spread out. Unfortunately, now you don't have cheap cap years coming up unless you want to restructure and extend them, add void years. Andrew Barry's going to figure it out, but this is just an unbelievable gut punch. And it's literally the last thing I wanted to wake up to this morning. So with that being said, we're going to sign off, but we're going to come back. We're going to do a live show at noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. So come back then. I kind of had to just get my thoughts together before hopping live because, like everyone, saw the news, complete shock. Woke up, like, my alarm set. 8 a.m. Central, woke up, saw that, couldn't believe my eyes. They had, had to do a double take. Felt like the Nick Chubb injury all over again. Could not believe what I was seeing. But season's going to go on. This defense is special. And hopefully this is the start of some kind of movie. But I'm not too optimistic.